The Dutch rabbit is probably one of the easiest breeds to identify because of the distinctive white markings. The white blaze on the nose, and the white collar in the saddle on the back are a dead giveaway. Dutch is a small breed, but not a dwarf. The fur is a normal length, with a soft underlayer covered by longer guard hairs. The fur is flyback, meaning that if brushed opposite to the direction of growth, the fur quickly snaps back to its normal position. Ears are upright. The breed standard for Dutch rabbit calls for a compact body. It should be rounded and balanced. Ears are upright and the markings must be distinct. A show-worthy Dutch rabbit should have a very rounded body throughout. They have a small, compact body with a rounded head, short, broad ears, and back legs that are longer than the front legs. Dutch Rabbit Breed History The Dutch rabbit is among the first rabbit breeds recognized by the National Pet Stock Association, the forerunner of the American Rabbit Breeders Association. The NPSA was founded in 1910 and had several name changes until becoming the ARBA in 1952. According to Bob D. Whitman's book Domestic Rabbits and Their Histories, the Dutch breed is descended from the Brabanson breed out of Belgium. It got its name by 1835, and the first written account describing the breed appears in manuals for the many, dated 1865. Whitman credits the original Dutch breed to England. General Physical Description The Dutch rabbit is a fairly small compact rabbit, with ears that stand erect and powerful back legs that are longer than the front legs. The Dutch rabbit is always white with the addition of another base color. They are one of the most popular rabbits kept as pets today. The average adult Dutch rabbit will weigh between 4 to 5 and a half pounds and on average will live 5 to 8 years longer lifespans can be expected if the animals are neutered or spayed. The longest lifespan that has been reported is 15 years with 10 years not all that uncommon. Characteristics of the Dutch rabbit Without question, the most dominant characteristic of the Dutch rabbit has to be the formal attire of its markings. Very striking in appearance, the Dutch rabbit always stands out from the crowd. A classy rabbit easily recognized in the best of circles. Coat A Dutch rabbit's flyback fur is short, glossy, and easy to maintain. Like most rabbit breeds, the Dutch rabbit will also go through a seasonal molt, much like a dog when it sheds in the spring. During that time, you will have to groom them a little more often than usual. When they go through molts, you can expect to have your clothes full of their fur when you pick them up and give them some loving, which is why daily brushing during molts is a must. Otherwise, one brushing a week should be sufficient. Colors There are several types of Dutch rabbits, all identified by their coats. Despite having so many types, however, their markings are almost all the same. They all have dark colored ears and rumps, a band of white from the top of their shoulders to their belly, white legs, and a wedge of white fur running up the front of the face which is called the blaze. There is the black Dutch rabbit, which has pure white and slate black fur with dark brown eyes. The blue Dutch whose eyes are a blue-gray and fur color is a medium dark blue and glossy, and the chinchilla Dutch who has either dark brown or blue-gray and their fur is a speckled gray mixed with white. There are four more Dutch rabbits that are also recognized in shows including the chocolate Dutch, either dark brown or ruby eyes, and chocolate brown fur. The gray Dutch that has mixed colored fur, slate blue, medium tan, then charcoal brown and chocolate, and dark brown eyes, the steel Dutch rabbit, dark brown eyes and a mostly black body with off-white or cream coloration on some of the hair tips, and finally, the tortoise Dutch rabbit, bright orange or cream colored coat and dark brown eyes. A Dutch rabbit's flyback fur is short, glossy and easy to maintain. Standards of Perfection Every five years the Arba Standards Committee and Board of Directors publish what is called the Standards of Perfection for each of the standard breeds recognized in the United States. This guide provides a standardization that is used by judges and breeders alike for evaluating both rabbits and cavies to identify quality show animals. The goal of every responsible rabbit breeder is the challenge of producing animals that best reflect the standards of perfection in type and marking for their breed. The first step for the new breeder is to build a base to start from. That is best done by purchasing the highest quality pedigreed stock the breeder can afford. This is normally accomplished by visiting rabbit shows and buying from reputable and experienced breeders who often bring to the show breeding quality rabbits from their stock that they are willing to sell. With that done, the real work can begin. Once the breeder is armed with a fundamental understanding of genetics plus the skill to recognize the strengths and weaknesses in his or her base breeding stock, that knowledge can be put to work matching prospective breeding pairs. The key to producing quality animals always rests with selective breeding to cultivate and enhance positive characteristics while culling out the less desirable. The design of the breeding program is the search for the elusive perfect rabbit. In the search for perfection, probably few other rabbit breeds are the bar raised higher than it is for the Dutch. Consider the fancy rabbit, 
The pursuit of near perfection in its markings is a true test of patience and perseverance on the part of the breeder. In the case of the Dutch, it almost seems that if something can go wrong it will. From a cheek that is too long to stops that are uneven to a slight spot on the end of the nose, all our faults and imperfections either can be a disqualification or at least points lost at the judging table. On the contrary, it is a statement about what makes raising Dutch rabbits so challenging and interesting. If it were easy to raise the perfect Dutch rabbits everyone would be doing it. Varieties The American Rabbit Breeder Association recognizes six distinctive varieties of Dutch rabbits, black, blue chocolate, gray steel, and tortoise. Other varieties exist and are popular in European countries and elsewhere around the world where these other varieties are recognized. General Type When showing the Dutch rabbit, the general type makes up 50% of the judging points with the marking making up the other 50% for a total of 100 points. The term type refers to the pleasing coupling of proportion and contour in respect to the shape of the body, in combination with the appearance and proportion of its individual parts and how they all harmonize and give balance to the whole. Special attention is paid to the color of the fur, the eyes, and the absence of distracting imperfections in either or to other parts of the body. Body To be considered a show rabbit the body should be compact, having a close coupled appearance with a nicely rounded back. From directly behind the head the rabbit should display an even pleasing curve up over the shoulders on its highest point at the loin and hips, then rounding off into full and smooth hindquarters. Looking from the top, the rabbit's shoulders should be rounded but slightly narrower than the hips. The hips should be well-rounded, smooth, and full all the way to the base of the hindquarters with no protrusion of the hips to mar the total effect. The truly proportioned body of the Dutch rabbit is the picture of elegance. Feet and Legs The feet and legs must be straight and of the proper length and size to balance and be in harmony with the body of the rabbit. Toenails must be white in all varieties. Nails of any other color than white are a disqualification. Cheeks the cheeks make up the colored portion of the head and must be full, even, well-rounded, and balanced on both sides of the blaze with no ragged or angular portions to disrupt the smooth curve of the joining line. The cheeks should come to but not run through the whisker bed and should follow the curve of the jawbone until meeting the line of the neck. At no point should there be dragged into the throat, mouth areas, into the whisker bed, or below the jawline. The line of the cheeks is to maintain an even curve throughout its course. Any portions that become angular are considered faults and will count against the point score. Perfection in the cheeks is one of the most difficult to achieve. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.